Good afternoon, Atlantic and Cape May Counties. I'm Gary Brandon Panter, and this is KFTV. We begin today with the sale and transfer of a long established local TV station. Started in 1966, MGM was home to NBC40. This hyperlocal station served Atlantic and Cape May counties for decades, but officially shut down December of 2014. Now, Univision has purchased the signal for $6 million. The new ownership was finalized in early November, but we are reporting on it now because this is our first and only newscast. Over the last month, our crew here at KFTV have hit the streets to find out what you have to say on some of television's most pressing topics. After surveying more than 25 ACCC students, the results are in. We asked how many hours they spend watching television a day. The number one answer given was three or more hours, with two to three coming in second. While the 18 to 20 year old range seems to be more spread out with their watch times, it is clear that the older students are watching television for longer periods of time. Knowing how long these students watch television for, we then wanted to know when they watch. The majority of men watch television from 5 p.m. on, almost opposite of when the majority of women watch, which is before noon. Another trend we discovered is that students from ages 24 to 26 are the leading age group for watching television before noon. Next, we learned that the popular choice between cable and streaming at ACCC is streaming, beating cable out by six students. The older participants mainly use cable as opposed to the younger ones who almost completely use streaming services. Moving on to favorite genres, the male students seemed to show favoritism towards sports, news, and sitcoms, while the women were more interested in reality, drama, and again, sitcoms. Both reality and sitcom received the highest number of votes. For the different age groups, the only genre that stuck out was sitcoms, with five votes from the 18 to 20 year old age range. Finally, we asked the students who they watch TV with. It was no surprise to find that the majority of them watch TV alone. 50% of students watch TV alone compared to the 31% who watch with friends and 19% who watch with family. The 24 to 26 year olds mainly watch TV with their families and the 18 to 20 year olds mainly watch TV with their friends. But the poor 21 to 23 year olds almost only watch TV alone. Sad. KFTV is a strong supporter of providing local content to Atlantic and Cape May counties. But without a successful business strategy, how would we survive? Our investigative reporter, Sidney Tolbert, dug deep into a fellow local news provider's history to find out just how they do it. Hello, my name is Sydney Tolbert with KFTV. Today, I am investigating 6 ABC located at 4100 City Avenue in Philadelphia, PA. For over 50 years, 6 ABC has been broadcasting programs to viewers in Delaware Valley in areas covering southeastern Pennsylvania and southern New Jersey, which is currently representing over 8 million people. 6 ABC is considered one of the most successful television stations in the country in terms of its history and dominance in both revenue and news ratings. WPVI was originally labeled as WFIL-TV before a sale was made to capture Capital Cities Communication, who took control of Channel 6, changed its call letters to WPVI. Some have said that Capital Cities was only able to pull off the deal because WPVI-TV's company flagship property became more profitable. Channel 6 almost had to sell off because of the large grade B signal that overlapped with WABC-TV. The company now has revenue of $15.5 million. Because 6ABC is an affiliate of ABC, they receive payments and commercials to air during ABC television shows like Blackish, How to Get Away with Murder, and Scandal. WPVI reaches us in a variety of ways like social media on their 6ABC website and of course on television. Now that's all the dirt that I dug up today. Back to you, Gary. For our viewers who don't know much about the field of television, you're in luck. I sat down earlier today with the chief forecaster of SNJ Today News to discuss the industry and what it entails. Hello, Nor'easter Nick. Hey, good to How's see you. Going? I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are things at SNJ Today? Booming, booming, busy, and uh, we are all excited for what the future has to, to bring. We are bringing lots of good stuff to the community, and it's uh, very exciting to be a part of it. That's good. Now. What is it exactly that you do at SNJ today? All you have to do is turn on the TV and find out. Uh, I'm the chief forecaster. I'm basically, you turn on the news and I'm on the weather at 7.07 and 11.17. I basically, uh, everything meteorology is what I do. I'm supposed to be in charge of putting the weather forecast together from start to finish. Um, aside from what you see on, on the telly, 
I'm out there in the community at special events and speaking engagements and visiting schools. Uh, I'm in the classroom constantly. Almost every week I have uh, one or two schools that I visit to, to teach about weather. So my job goes beyond um, the airwaves and basically, you know, uh, to everywhere else in the community as well. Now, why did you go into this industry in the first place? Well, I uh, was terrified of thunderstorms growing up. I used to hide under my bed. I, I grew up uh, on the bay right across from Abasekin. And I used to hide under my bed when thunderstorms would roll across the bay. And uh, I just stopped that a couple months ago. Uh, I wanted to understand what made Mother Nature tick. I always had a big mouth growing up. I had a love of weather. Decided to put the two things together. Uh, in elementary school, I auditioned to be the morning announcements weather guy. Uh, Fast forward 20 years and here I am today. Uh, but basically it goes back to my love of science and weather and the ability to use my big mouth to communicate it to the masses. Wow, you really seem to care about your industry. Can you tell me something special about it then? Absolutely. Opportunity. Uh, and I say that because there are a lot of chances um, one can have to succeed in this field. If you have the ambition to succeed, the sky is literally the limit. Uh, I started out very young. Uh, I, am, I still consider myself young in the career and uh, I'm just gonna keep going and going. But in this field, you can go from Atlantic City to New York in a relatively short amount of time. And uh, in this industry, you know, New York or Philadelphia, uh, that's what we judge ourselves against and judge our level of success. Uh, you can move all over the country and learn different things. Um, you can acquire new skills. And at the end of the day, you are going to feel extremely accomplished with what you have uh, taken on uh, during your career, during the time that you are building yourself. So again, uh, you can go from a very small market to the number one market in the entire world if you have the drive to do it. And I think that's something that separates this field from most. Well, as someone who's in the same field as you, I 100% agree with that statement. It couldn't be more true. Now, on a unrelated note, if you had superpowers and could change one thing about the television industry, what would it be and why? That's a funny question. Honestly, I think I would get rid of ratings uh, because especially in my field with meteorology, every little storm, it could be an inch of snow, you have team coverage and it creates panic and it creates hike, hype and uh, that goes on to social media and there's a lot of fake news now. It's just, uh, it's not what it used to be five or 10 years ago and if I could take ratings out of the equation, that would stop stations from competing for sensationalism. Get rid of that with one superpower, bam, gone, my day's better. You know, I think everyone's day would be better. One more thing before you go. What are some of the media sources that you consume on a daily basis? And how do you think they affect your everyday life? I think 99% of my day is actually uh, consumed by Facebook. Uh, things have changed over the past five to 10 years. When I first started in this field, Facebook, it was in its infancy. Uh, we just came on air, did our job, and, and went about our days. Now I'm constantly interacting with viewers, which is good and bad. It's good because within an instant I can talk to 20,000 plus people. Uh, it's bad because unfortunately there are a lot of uh, fear mongers out there. There are a lot of people who don't necessarily have a scientific background in meteorology that are putting out forecasts. Uh, they're putting out forecasts one of two ways. One, they truly believe in what they're saying, even though it's completely wrong and that creates hype. Or the second way, they know what they are spewing is wrong and they do it for hype. So I find that us in this field, in, in meteorology, are constantly battling this uh, sense of, of hype and you know, I joke about it all the time. Uh, you got to get the bread and milk, the bread and milk and eggs. Um, nothing can be further from the truth with, uh, with most of the storms that come on by. Uh, but 
it's kind of like um, an uphill battle sometimes because I am constantly being bombarded with questions about these uh, weather predictions that obviously don't come to pass 99% of the time. Uh, so I think that is what I have to say uh, impacts my life the biggest way today. Again, it's both good, but sometimes mostly bad based on the situation. That's all the questions I have for you. Thank you for coming, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks, and good luck with KFTV. Are you up to date with all the latest trends? Our entertainment reporter Kyle McBride is here to keep you in the know on where the field of television has been and where it's going. What's better, cable or streaming? Let's analyze the difference between them. With cable, you can get up to more than 500 channels, most of which people would never watch unless the channel is surfing. Other, fl other plus for the cable is usually people don't have to worry about the buffering, the internet connection as you do with streaming. Sports fans can also get access to different sports channels with the help of the cable box. Now let's look at the cable bill and see what we are paying for. Some of the cable bills list everything while others tend to bundle stuff. However, the bill usually includes taxes, surcharge fees, fees for the cable box, HD and DVR fees, and also maintenance fee. To get a deluxe package, it might cost around $130 per month. As a first-time consumer, they might throw in premium channels such as HBO. However, after your initial contract is up, those premium channels are added up on for $10 a piece. On the flip side of things, streaming is becoming very popular because of some of its advantages. Streaming may all have the way of variety of shows, just like cable, but at a lower rate. People can stream Netflix, Hulu, Amazon for around the price of $10 each, each per month. Some of the shows from the networks might also be offered, but not only on the original air date, and sometimes only past seasons, and not the current season at all. There is, of course, the streaming issue that was previously mentioned. So what's the best deal for now? That depends on the consumer. Although the older generation are comfortable with cable, many millennials are turning to streaming instead. This could mean that in the future, cable companies will lim be limited entirely. The only thing that is stopping that from happening if, is if the cable learns to adapt to the changing world of television. Streaming is the future of this field. It has already made a mark and can only become more influential from here on out. I'm Kyle McBride with KFTV. Television surrounds you from your morning coffee to the moment you lie down in bed and everywhere in between. The average American consumes about five hours a day. With TV being so prevalent in your everyday life, how could it not be the most important and influential form of media? It changes our attitudes based off of what we are watching, making us happy or sad. It influences our beliefs through politics, sports, and entertainment, persuading the consumer to have a certain stance, root for a certain team, or follow a new fashion trend. Finally, it can affect our values through teaching us life lessons. TV can show us what is right or wrong, reveal a different side of human nature, and explain different cultures from around the world. Without television, mass media would be changed for the worse. Well, that's our show for today. If you want to check us out again, you can't, because this is our only newscast ever. You can't reach us on social media or our website because we have neither. All of us here at KFTV wish you good luck on your upcoming finals. GBP, signing out.